Yeah, we back on sports, and you know what? Y'all don't even, like it's on Twitter, y'all don't even deserve this shit as far as I'm concerned, this fucking video. But you know what, you peasants? Y'all gonna get this shit today. Y'all gonna catch this fucking heat. Because you know what? The city, not only the media, but its fans have become so fucking soft and confused, they don't know what the fuck to think anymore. And that's what we gonna start. We gonna start with the Phillies. That's right. We gonna start off with the Phillies who have been losing all their games, which you already knew what the fuck was gonna happen. You knew that shit was gonna happen. And yet, y'all still bitching and moaning about it online. Well, you know what? The media, the radio guys, and I gotta say this. For years, I ain't told you guys about the media, about the radio guys, about how they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, and 99% of them are fucking fraud-ass fans. They only do this shit for attention. Did I not tell you that? Okay, so let's get started with that first, all right? Before I even get on the fans, we am get on the media, okay? So, let's talk about the Phillies losing, and one, Angelo Cataldi. That's right. Angelo Cataldi comes out not too long ago and says, is the media soft when it comes to Philadelphia sports? So, let's hear what he, you know, what he actually said in an article about that. The softness in Philadelphia media. The softness. It's funny you say that because I don't recall the Philadelphia media ever being recognized as soft. We know it as being rude, shrewd, ignorant, and everything else, have we not? Let's talk about, we should, we very should talk about this. Because it's not just the Philadelphia media. Before I even go to Philadelphia media, let's talk about the media scope overall, at large. Alright, let's talk about that. Because the media in general is rude, shrewd, ignorant, and will do whatever they need to, to get attention, and to get clicks, likes, and whatever type of ratings. We've seen it time and time again. So let's start from the beginning. When a pro, when an athlete decides to go pro, not even pro, we can have an athlete come from AAU ball straight to college, and that's when the media hype starts. And then you build these players up to them being men, you know, gods among men. How we not? We see it time and time again. The video packages, how much they get paid, and how they'll be an asset, and how their investments. And uh, you talk about all this shit to build them up so that people will come to see them. It's the hardest of hardcore advertising we've ever seen for sports. It's the media on an everyday basis. Okay? That's number one. But as soon as the player doesn't live up to that standard or live up to the pay, all of a sudden you throw them under the bus as quick as possible, don't you? Because the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. That's how the media acts. They act like they are God. So as far as I'm concerned, fuck the media. Now, if we want to talk about onto a lower level of media, which is radio, which I've told you, we've talked about this time and time again, how disgusting radio can be, and how the funds for radio really, you know, where they go to other things like, oh yeah, we're going to bring these girls in, and you're going to listen to our radio show, even though you can't see the girls, but we'll take pictures of it, okay? We're going to bring these hot girls in, and that does what for sports? Nothing. It's for attention. When you could be taking that money and actually putting it into venues that actually has sports. But no, you don't want to do that. Not at all. Like I said, it's not about sports all the damn time. No, it's about attention for that station. So when a radio personality comes out, personality, comes out and says this shit, yeah, you best believe I'm looking at him like you're a fucking fraud anyway. We see time and time again, day in, day out. They say the dumbest shit Possible, and you always say to yourself, and you guys have said it too on your own videos, or you see on Twitter, or your Facebook, or in comment sections, whatever. How do these dudes still keep a job? Yeah, I don't know either, because they're fucking stupid, alright? But as you know, if people can get away with saying things like that, I mean, we got a great example on Skip Bayless. I mean, anytime you can get away with saying shit like that and still keep a job, you know what that means? That means anyone who's lower than being on that circuit can get away with it too. That means you're breeding a new generation of stupid, not only just stupid, uh, was it, commentators, stupid media person, radio personalities, stupid media, but also stupid fans, okay? But, let's talk about Philadelphia. So, we already know that Philadelphia can be rude and shrewd, it has never been uh, looked at as soft. At all. We've seen the Philadelphia media go after players' families simply because they don't have anything else to talk about. We've seen the media overall scope go after players just when they simply don't like them to try and find a story. We just saw not too long ago Richard Sherman do that at a press conference, did we not? When he sat here and said, you'll just make up shit and you don't even have to claim your sources. But as soon as a player has to say it, he has to own up to that. We saw that just not too long ago. But should we talk about Marshawn Lynch? Remember how they tried to get Marshawn Lynch not too long ago? Oh yeah, y'all don't want to talk about that though. The media has done this time and time again, and they will always keep doing this. I mean, hell, just last year, and I called it, did I not? When Joel Embiid got hurt, 
The media went right after him. I did a video on what I say. The media's going to say he can't be the guy because he's a liability because of his injury. And what happened? CSL went right after it. Right after it. And B, can he be the guy? Should we, should we back him? Should we think about trading him? Because now he's been hurt all this time and he couldn't finish a full season. We will talk about that shit later, okay? But the fact is, this is what the media did. That's what they did. So you want to praise an athlete one minute as long as he's living up to that standard or if he gets hurt or if he gets thrown under, you know, he doesn't play and have a good game, he gets thrown under the bus. And people fall into it. They just fall in line. Well, here's something. The Phillies, as you know, hurting, losing. You know how long it takes to, re- I'll play this. Do you understand how long it takes to replace a regime that took us to the World Series? You know how long that takes? All right, and do you understand how long it took to build that regime to even get to a World Series? Do you understand that? All right, it takes a very long time. So we knew they were going to be bad this season, They're just like they were bad last season and the season before that. Okay, it's going to take quite a while. Now I pull like this since this has happened. All right, Angelo Cataldi, yeah. Now he's saying because the Phillies are losing so bad that he's thinking about leaving being a Phillies fan and becoming, check this out, a Yankees fan. Support his decision. <laughs> no, get the fuck out of here. The fact that you even thought about becoming a Yankees fan, just you're already there as far as I'm concerned. Just leave. You're not even welcome anymore when it comes to Philadelphia sports. Don't even talk about Philadelphia sports. Oh, I forgot. But that's your job, right? Or is it the fact that you only said that because you want attention? Which one is it? Are you an attention whore or are you just a bandwagoner? Which one is it? And the fact that you picked the Yankees out of all teams, that tells me a lot as well. The fact is, people, when you see these type of things, these are not real fans. They're not. I don't want to hear you've gotten to the point where you're so fed up with Philadelphia sports that you've decided to move on. I don't want to hear that. As a person who's been living here all his life in Philadelphia, you think I'm going to turn my back on these teams? No. I may be critical of some shit, yes, because I feel as though it deserves to be done. And it's rightfully so. And everyone's, you know, they're, they're allowed to their opinion if they want to criticize as far as I'm concerned. Regardless if you're winning or not. Because even when you win, you can ask any coach, any GM. Alright, well, not any GM because Sam Hickey doesn't know any shit about winning. But the fact is, if you ask any coach or any GM who's won something, they will tell you as soon as that World Series or that Super Bowl or that NBA Championship or whatever is over. Okay, what do you do? You start rebuilding right then and there. Because just because you have the team from last year doesn't mean they're going to perform the same way. So you got to look and see, especially when it comes to contracts, salary cap, and things of that. You have to make sure you got the right pieces to take you back and win it again. So guess what? The criticism is always there. If it's not from the fans, it's always going to be from the coaches and the front office. But no one wants to talk about that shit. Because as long as you got enough media people hyping shit up, then that's all that matters, right? And that's what we're going to talk about soon. But since I brought up the NBA fucking championship, let's talk about that right now. Let's talk about the Griffin Force flop of the week that goes to the NBA champions, all right? Yes, that's right. The Golden State Warriors. Uh Uh-huh. Anybody want to guess who it is? Anybody? Draymond Green. Draymond Green, welcome to the show. How can you sit here and sit here, sit here and do that flop in basketball? And I want to make this very well known because when you see this shit, it's a joke, and I want you to listen to the commentary as well, as they think it's a joke, too. Green, so, so, well, if they're still getting you for, for flops, even though there was a foul, well, that is a prime candidate. It's Green, he certainly got hit, but sold it. Loves the whack in the face. <laughs> That's clearly a foul, but come on, Jay Martin. you got to be kidding me. He wouldn't go down <laughs> and flint that hard, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously, you're just going to throw yourself on the ground like that. Look, was he fouled? Yes. The arm barely touched him, but he was fouled. He was. But he ended up throwing himself on the ground like that. Don't tell me that's okay, because he had to sell it. That's bullshit. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, players get fouled, but the refs don't call anything. You don't think that everyone else that plays basketball gets hacked every fucking day? Guess what they do? They play through it. Guess what they do? But as soon as these guys get touched, ah, and then you go and buy the fucking jersey. You gotta be kidding me. There's no way now. I don't understand how you can, as a, if you've played any type of basketball in your life, 
and you know you've taken a hard hit, but you keep going because if you take a hard hit and you stop and you do some shit like that, people gonna call you soft, they gonna call you a bitch, they gonna call you all types of names on the court, and guess what? They ain't gonna want you on their team, which means you're gonna be alienated and you ain't gonna be able to play anymore. So you suck it up and you play hard. You go through it. You dig deep. That's what you do. That's what you learn. But as soon as one of these dudes do it, oh my god, that's okay. We can just, we can just overlook that. Because this player's gonna score points because he's godlike. Right? That's what you're gonna say next. It's the dumbest, just the dumbest justification I have ever seen. It just is. There's no room for flopping in basketball. And no one grows up learning to flop. No one. That has to be taught by coaches. Well, these days, they're starting to uh, teach little kids, which should tell you something. But the fact is, this, this shouldn't even be, this shouldn't even be on the radar. These things shouldn't even be happening. And for Adam Silver to want to clean up the league, yeah, you're not doing a good job of it. Well, we'll just find people. Well, how's that been going? Not going well, right? Like I said, when you're paying athletes millions of dollars, and these teams are like, you know, the owners are like, don't even worry about it. I got you. Go ahead and flop. If it's going to give us a championship, go ahead and flop. That's the, that's the mentality it's on now. Deceiving refs. Lying to refs. Because that's what you have to do to win. Unlike the old days where guys just played hard and crushed with talent. No one's talked about that. But speaking of talent, we're going to move on to the next season coming up of the NBA. I understand the draft is coming up. We will talk about the fucking draft because I am severely disappointed of what I've seen so far out of my home team's fan base. But before we get started with that, I want to remind people, okay, that the Golden State Warriors, again, I told you about criticism and about reloading for the next season. Already, they are beginning to reload for the next season. What did I tell y'all last season, and the season before that, and the season before that? You're going to see the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals, or close to it, all right, in the NBA Finals, at least for five years, maybe six. Do you not understand this? Did you not see what just happened in the NBA this year? Because the season was complete ass, all right? And I told you, and what do people usually say? Well, the season's usually bad, so we tune in for the, you know, for the, for the postseason. The NBA playoffs is lit. And what happened? The NBA, the NBA playoffs was ass. It was absolute trash. And people said, yeah, well, the postseason was really bad when we came to the playoffs. But the finals is going to be good, though. And what happened in the finals? The Golden State Warriors swept all the way up to the finals, and they lost one game in the finals. One. Do you, know, do you understand how much money was lost? And I'm not saying within fans. Money was lost in the league because it was a short finals as well. Do you understand that? How much revenue was lost? Because if they didn't extend it to games, you understand, when games are extended, series are extended, all right, especially in the finals, they make a lot more money. A lot more. Not just in buy rates, but the fact that people are filling up those seats. All right, you have to understand there is a lot at play here when it comes to business. But no one ever looks at it that way. Nobody. I don't understand this at all. I mean, you're supposed to be basketball fans, right? Right? The Golden State Warriors, like I've said for the previous couple of years, will probably more likely, because yes, they, 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 went, they tore through the best conference in the league with no problems. Now, if they lose Iguodala or a couple guys, they're going to replace them with Zach Randolph and Vince. It's probably bench, listen, veteran bench options, but can still get the job done. You've got to be kidding me here. They're going to be back in the finals again. Unless San Antonio can somehow muster up something to get them, you know, or even the Rockets can muster up something to try and stop them. But I don't see that happening either. Now, let's move on to the Ailing East. Because as far as I'm concerned, even though we're seeing a lot of problems with the Cavs right now, they fired a GM or whatever, the East is still horrible. Still horrible. Who's the contenders other than Boston? Who's the contenders? Nobody. Nobody. Who's going, who's, Miami? No. No. There's just, there's nobody. And before anyone says anything about the Sixers, I do want to talk more about Boston real quick. All right? Because we're going to get on that. All right? Because y'all have to understand, because we've seen Boston fans upset because of the trade, all right? This is what I mean, fans, here we go, all right? Because of the, the pick and the trade, let's talk about this. Sixers fans, where the fuck do you get off acting like this high and mighty arrogant bullshit, all right? I'm going to explain something to you, okay? Because you fans weren't, fans weren't around when the Sixers were playing really bad. A lot of you weren't. 
Now that, you know, we're, we're acquiring these picks or whatever, now you want to act like you're here. And you've admitted that you weren't around at the time. So who the fuck are you to even address me? All right? Who are you? You're nobody. You haven't been here. You, haven't, you weren't here when they were losing. No. You said yourself, it was too hard to watch, so you had to wait until they somewhat got exciting. Anyone remember what I said last season when the season ended then? What did I say? Next season, when Embiid, if he plays... It's going to be an exciting season. They're going to lose a bunch of games. They're not going to win much, but at least they'll lose in close games. I said that last season before the season started. And what happened? What happened? They lost a lot of close games did they night. Did they not? And people were like, but it's exciting. It's exciting. It's okay. No, it's not okay. This shit was already seen a long time ago. I threw that shit from the other room. You got to be kidding me that all of a sudden we're supposed to act like this is a surprise. Because it's not. But the fact is... For years and years, and anyone could go back and watch these fucking videos because they all hear is reference, alright? How many times I've been saying, we need a point guard? I've been saying we need a point guard before we had Ish Smith. We need a point guard. And y'all was like, especially before this, you know, this trade happened, uh, was it with Boston? Before, and y'all was like, nah, we go with Ben Simmons running the point. We go with that because that's what the media fed you. Ben Simmons gonna run the point. The media said that shit, alright? Showed you that video and tweets. The media saying Ben Simmons going to run the point next year. And y'all was cool with that. And I said, got no choice but to be cool with it. But we still need a point guard. And what did y'all tell me all season last season? Nah, we good, fam. Because Rodriguez is balling, right? Remember that? Biz Marquis said so. You know, Rodriguez balling. McConnell, White, Jordan, and all this. And though that was a joke, y'all still tried to hype McConnell to the moon as well. Even though McConnell is a lot better than Rodriguez. But what happened last season? I had to show y'all time and time again by video. Break down the fucking plays for y'all to show y'all. These guys aren't really good at point guard. Chucking shots up near half court. You gotta be kidding me. That's not what point guards do. It's absolutely ridiculous that y'all sat and y'all caped for Rodriguez and McConnell. Alright? And then said, don't worry about it. Because Ben Simmons, dude. Ben Simmons, he's going to run the point. Now that we got this pick, now it's false. False the guy. False the guy. We were so happy about false. And then when I talked to y'all about false, so what do you remember about him, you know, in his college game? We didn't watch college. We don't watch college basketball. Seriously? That's what y'all coming with. So y'all hype over a guy y'all don't know, but because everyone sees, well, he's going to be the overall first round pick, now we got to hype this shit to the moon. I don't know who he is, but I'm hyped. Who is he? I don't know, but let's just parrot the shit. That's what y'all doing right now. But when y'all get in a real conversation with me about this shit and y'all start getting slaughtered, what happens? I got to call for help. I, I, I'm going to at my friend so he can jump in this. And all you're going to do is insult you, but it don't matter. We need to dogpile you to stop these facts. Fuck you. Because that's what it is. You got to be kidding me that all of a sudden we on this false train. All right? Now, look, here's the thing. I'm okay with faults. Because, like I said, for years we need a point guard. We got ourselves a point guard as far as I'm concerned. So that's a good look for the Sixers. I'm not mad at the front office. But y'all act like we can't have any type of criticism towards the front office. After all we've seen since the Billy King era, you gonna act like we're not allowed to feel this way? Are you serious? Are you serious? Okay, so, let's talk about, since y'all like to, you know, praise this man to the moon, let me shoot down your hype for fucking Sam Hankey again, okay? Because it seems like a lot of you don't understand what it means about GM duties. Duties, you know, because, because you know, there's multiple of them. Because when you talk about tanking and saying that we had to acquire the picks and all this other shit, y'all fail to realize the shit that Sam Hinkie did. This is the reason why he resigned. Because if he wasn't going to resign, he was going to be fired. Okay? You have to understand. All you do is look at picks and say, we acquired these picks, we did this, we bring people over, and it worked. He's a genius. Do you want to talk about the fact that how he was treating pet players like shit, and the coach like shit, and agents like shit? Remember those dark days when they were losing all the time because we didn't have anyone? Oh, well, he had to bring up homegrown talent. No, he had no choice but to bring guys from the D-League because agents were, he pissed off and burned so many bridges with agents, they didn't want to give them their top players. Remember that? Remember how Ish Smith came in? Because he was only there to get his dollars up so he can showcase his talents. He knew he was going to start, then move on. And where did he move on to? Detroit. He didn't stay. Y'all want to talk about that, though. You don't want to talk about how, the, how the, uh, was it, the coaches' union was getting ready to, to sue the Sixers because of the way Brett Brown was being treated. Remember when Jaleel Okafor was getting into all those fights? Remember that? What happened? 
Sam Hinkie was like, he getting the fights. Y'all want me to address it? I'm out. And that's what he did. And he left Brett Brown to take the heat for that. And he had to come back and he had to apologize for that shit. Because as a GM, he was not doing his duties. All right? Multiple of them. You can't piss off the refs union. You can't piss off the, was it, the, the coaches union. You can't piss off the, the, the agents because you need those players. So when y'all say, oh, well, we're tanking for the cause and all this, they had no fucking choice. They couldn't get anybody. And if they had to get someone, then guess what? They had to pay a very hefty price for them. But no one wants to talk about this shit. It's amazing. So now when we get the third pick, which nobody knew we were going to get the third pick, even though we played pretty bad, we weren't sure if we were going to get that high of a pick because it's a lottery for a reason. Y'all got hype. Y'all decided to get out there with another radio personality. Spike, uh, Spike Eskin? Yeah, another radio personality you don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Gonna hang up a banner for Sam Hinkie. Hinkie the God. He the greatest. He the GOAT. You can't be serious. Y'all look at one thing that helps your narrative instead of looking at the million other things that he fucked up on. That's not a good GM. That's not. But y'all want to talk about that though, right? Because the process. And then, here's the thing. Y'all don't even want to give Colangelo any type of fucking credit because we said, we got the third pick. Obviously, that's because of Hickey, right? Not because the Sixers just played so damn bad, you weren't sure. It was all part of the plan, right? The plan that you didn't know. Because if you knew we were going to get the third pick at the time, you wouldn't have got as hype as you did. Just like when they traded for the first pick, which was smart of Boston, which was smart. Because if you know what Boston needs, there's a reason they traded. But y'all don't want to talk about that either, right? Y'all don't want to talk about that. Yeah, we got the first pick. We going to get faults. I'm okay with getting faults. Like I said, need a point guard. But now y'all hyping this shit to the moon. Praise Hinky. Don't give Colangelo any credit for making that deal though, right? None. Okay, none. But he technically got the stock assets for us to do that. No, he didn't. No, when your team is still tanking, anybody can do that shit. It's not a stock asset. It's not just piling up assets. What happened to all those picks? What happened to all the guys? Oh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. We are. Yeah. But like I said, for you to think that we got something over on Boston, when you see what Boston needs, no, we didn't get anything over on Boston. It was smarter Boston. But here come the Boston fans to get upset about it. Because apparently, again, here we go burning jerseys. It's catching the cardboard. That's why it's burning now. Because before it wasn't catching shit. We good. The gasoline worked a little bit. Goodbye, folks. It was nice knowing you for two weeks. Bye. Green runs deep, but we don't need no folks around here. Now, I believe one of y'all asked me on Twitter, are you hyped for this yet? Are you hyped? No. I'm not fucking hype over the pick. You want to know why? That's a good example of why you shouldn't be fucking hype. Because here's the question. Why do you have a false jersey that's already best on Boston when he hasn't been picked yet? The, like I said, the deal wasn't finalized for the trade for a while, but you already had this in the holster, huh? You was just sitting and waiting. So when you got it, yeah, you can flash up the jersey, all right? Don't know how he's going to play in Boston, but I got the jersey already because I'm fucking hype. Then they trade picks, and now it's like, you look like a fucking idiot. So what do I gotta do? Now I'm gonna burn the jersey and put it on camera for views. No, it makes you look even worse. The fact that you spent the money to do that, all right, to buy the jersey because you're a fucking idiot because you should have waited to see where he was gonna go, all right? You were so hardcore bent on we're gonna get him when Boston didn't really need a guard, but okay, you were hard, you know, hardcore bent on that, right? Now he's going to the Sixers, and that's what you decide to do. You look like an idiot. This is what happens when you believe in hype. I told y'all, don't tell me any of this hype shit. I don't want it. Look, the draft is tonight, right? When, when we pick folks, I put it like this. Because if we don't, which I feel 99.9% .9 sure, fuck it, I'll say 100% sure, we're going to get faults. All right? But let's say the Sixers don't pick him. Let's just say Sixers don't pick him. Then what? Rage. Rage. These fans will freak out. But... We are going to pick him. So here's the thing. You already know we're getting him because the way you're hyped. So when we pick him, there shouldn't be no hype, right? There shouldn't be no hype. It shouldn't be finally. No. Because remember, 
There's no finally about it because you were caping Rodriguez and McConnell and saying those are the guys. We're good with those guys since we don't need a point guard because Ben's going to run it anyway. Right? So I don't want to hear any hype. What did I say? Don't talk this shit to me about hype until Summer League. And when I say that, some of y'all be like, what's Summer League? Really? What's Summer League? Okay. Like I said, when these guys can get together, they can gel together, we can see how they play, then, then I'll be ready for it. Because that's competition. This shit right now is nothing to me. It's nothing. You either, you, you, either you, you talk about it or you be about it. And I'm the type of person, even though I'm talking about it right now, I'm, I'm being about it. I'm letting you know. Nah, I'm not getting hyped. I don't give a shit until it's time to play basketball. It's a good acquisition if we get them. But I'm not going to start screaming to the moon and buying jerseys and all this other sh dumb shit like you see other people do. Because they so desperately want to be on that hype train. They want to say, hey, look, I'm one of you. Look what I got. I'm one of you. It's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. And you know what? It goes even further than that. Because these stupid fucking Philly fans, alright? Yes, you're fucking stupid. Oh my god. You get to the point where I want to punch you in the fucking face for being so stupid. How are you going to go and ask Emma Turner to come back to the fucking Sixers? Evan Turner was horrible when he was here. He damn near robbed us of a, of a pick, if you, if you ask me, and money, if you ask me. He was a horrible player who deserved to get moved. He should have been uh, put out the NBA a long time ago, but he went to Boston, and he paid his dues, and then he got a huge contract with, was it, with Portland, and you're going to sit here and tell me that that's okay? Remember, every time you see, remember, we made this case last season, did we not? Noel wanted his money to stay with the Sixers, and people was like, no, too much money, too much money. Compare him to Evan Turner? And when Turner's getting paid, you had a problem paying for, for Noel? Okay, okay. Especially after they treated him, remember, because last year it was, well, you know, Noel's not going to find a spot on this starting on this starting a squad. And Sixers fans were just, they were shook. They were like, what the fuck? What do you mean? Because that was the guy, remember? He was the guy. And that's what we want to talk about. We're going to talk about the guy. Because the media, again, you keep listening to the dumbasses. All right, about who's the guy over the years, the guy. So let's talk about what we've seen so far this week because so many people say this picture is tough, this picture is scary. Can you imagine this team on the floor? Blah 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 blah, and parrot 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 parrot. That's all you fucking do. All right. So let's talk about this picture since you love it so fucking much and the guy. Well, this is the team. That's going to take us to the promised land. It's the team get to beat the Cavs, huh? This the team. All right, so while y'all hype over this, this is what I see, okay? A rookie who hasn't been picked yet, who will be picked tonight in the draft. That's fine. I see another rookie who hasn't played because, obviously, putting on a bunch of weight, muscle, because, you know, running back and forth and burning calories throughout the entire summer league, apparently you can still put on 30 to 35 pounds of muscle, whatever, 33, 35 pounds of muscle. And for some reason, people believe this shit. Okay, but he was injured. Injury. All right. You have another player who had his rookie season last season because, of course, he didn't play until before then. Then when he played and showed us flashes of great talent and Embiid couldn't finish the season because he was injured. So far, that's three out of four. Robert Covington who is streaky as fuck when it comes to shooting, right? I mean, let's be honest here. Let's not talk about half the season where people were booing him off the fucking court because he couldn't make a shot. Even the announcers, even Mark Zumoff got to a point. Y'all know how Mark Zumoff is. He is Homer to the end, all right? Mr. Positivity. But even he was like, it's about damn time he made a shot. Right? Hopefully he's been practicing. But did you realize that he just came off surgery as well? Injury. So we got three... Out of four people in that picture who's been injured. If anything, no one should be saying, this squad tough as fuck. This is a scary looking squad. You should be saying, hopefully these guys can stay healthy. They can gel together and they can play. Let's see what they can do if they can stay healthy. But y'all don't want to take it. Nah, y'all can't take it to that point. Nah, y'all can't be here about it and be like, let's see what they can do. No, y'all got to take it all the way up here, all right? And say, no, this is the squad. We the great, we the greatest, you know, I'm waiting for someone to yell, dream team. That's all I'm waiting for. You've got to be kidding me. And I know some of y'all just saying, look, man, we just want to be competitive again. You want competition? Then take your ass outside and go play some fucking basketball then. Stop waiting for someone else to be competitive for you. 
bunch of bitches. That's all I see. You want to talk about soft Cataldi? How about the fucking fan base? A bunch of soft bitches. You got to be kidding me. There is no reason for this shit. I am hoping that the Sixers do pick folks. I'm hoping that these guys can stay healthy. I'm hoping that these guys will play well in Summer League and in the regular season. But there are a lot of people who are hyping this shit up who just last season the final said, this shit is rigged. Well, if it's fucking rigged, what the fuck you getting so hyped for then? Huh? What you getting hyped for then? If it's rigged. What's the point of watching if it's rigged? Huh? Anyone will tell you I watch this shit simply. Alright, I want to see if they're going to be somewhat competitive. But I'm going to laugh at this shit. You can't take this shit seriously when guys are throwing themselves on the fucking floor. And refs are missing obvious fucking calls. Game four of the finals, refs should have been fired. Completely fired. But they weren't. It's absolutely ridiculous what we have seen from the NBA. And if anybody knows real basketball, I'm not trying to hear you're so gun-ho as a fucking fan. Look at the shit that's going on. Stop falling for this shit. Matter of fact, I know a lot of you don't like to do research, alright? Because you want, once again, you want others to do it for you. But here's the thing. If you go on Marshall Harris's Twitter right now and you look at his timeline when he's talking about Fultz, Fultz says, he says that Fultz, sorry, is the guy. So, Noel was the guy. Big Ja was the guy. This year, Embiid was the well, last season, Embiid was the guy, even though he didn't finish that season. And then it was like, wait till next year. Simmons is going to be the guy. Now that we got this pick, what does Marshall Harris say? Fox is the guy. The guy. Remember, when this started, when it came to the process, it was about finding a LeBron James type player. Then you start to slowly realize, hey, wait, even LeBron can't do this on his own. You need pieces to complement said player. If Simmons is supposed to be the guy, then why the fuck all of a sudden is Markel the guy? Huh? It's a, We're not talking the guy at said position. Because that's fine. I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. The guy at said position. But that's not what we're talking about here. Now are we? Alright then. We're talking about the guy. So which one is it? Hmm? I'm just wondering. Because you keep shuffling the deck. And these fans are stooping up to fucking listen to y'all. So they're like hamsters in a wheel. Just regurgitate the same shit over and over and over and over. The media has played y'all so fucking well. And Cataldi wants to say they're soft? Nah. Nah. They're fucking deceitful. That's what they are. And they're sly and they know exactly what they're doing. Every time you see an article, well such and such happened, here's an article on, on how fans on Twitter reacted. They're waiting for you to give them news. Y'all want to talk about that shit though. We see that with Eagles fans. Y'all, you fall for the bait every fucking time. Eagles fans, Sixers fans. I thought, I said Eagles Twitter is one of the worst, by, by possibly the worst fucking fan base online. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Sixers fans now have them hands down. They've taken that title with, no, with, with, with one fell swoop. You like that, right, swoop? Anyways, anyways, it's absolutely ridiculous I have to see this. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to root on the Sixers for myself, because I'm an old school Sixers fan, I've grown up with the Sixers. A lot of these motherfuckers who still talk to me, trying to get at me, alright, and, and RT Armageddon, where the fuck that get y'all, huh? Didn't get y'all fucking nowhere. Shit failed horribly. But, like I said, these people are still kids, alright? You got these guys trying to dog pile you, didn't you see these pictures? Yeah, there's a reason you online talking shit, yeah, because you ain't saying no shit in real. Some of these dudes don't even play basketball. They couldn't run up and down the court for help, they have fucking cardiac arrest. But they gonna talk all this shit. Man, if you don't get the fuck out of my face, I said a lot of these people are not part of the basketball community. So when we speak on this shit, we're not just talking about from a fan's point of perspective. The reason we play basketball is because we live this shit. So we know what, what pieces we need. We know what type of bench depth we need. We know what the GMs in the front office got to do. And if they don't meet up for, you know, that, you know, to that expectation, just like how y'all get the players don't meet up to that expectation, then they deserve the criticism as well. But nah, we can't say anything about that, right? How dare you say anything about, about the franchise? Why do you hate us so much? One guy said not too long ago, he said, if you hated the Sixers fan base already, you're really going to hate them when RT Armageddon starts if we get, if we get fucked. You know what? You right. I hate y'all motherfuckers. Because y'all not real at all. Nobody should be hyping this shit up and trying to get at people over said pick that you have already. Nobody. Wait till the team is actually competitive and wins. 28 games. 28 games. You raising banners over 28 games. 
This is the fuck you doing. Don't nobody want to hear no logic though. And so this all going to come off as he just yelling. That's what's going to come the fuck off though. If I talk to y'all calm, y'all going to try and shoot me the fuck down. But if I get like this, then you'll be like, man, he just mad. No, nah, I'm telling y'all the real right now. So as far as I'm concerned, fuck y'all feelings. Jesus Christ. At this point, I'm done with this shit. Like I said, they going to get him. I expect them to get him. I'm not going to be like, yeah, we got him. Type. No, because you already know, right? Y'all already hyped it up. Y'all already know. So y'all don't need to get hype again. Or y'all just looking for a reason to get at people. Y'all looking for a reason to celebrate. Because let's be honest here. The city itself don't have a reason to celebrate right now. So you want to take every little fucking thing and blow it up to a larger proportion, aren't you? You know what that is? That's what you call not being real. That's what you call being pathetic. That's what you call being so fucking hurt that you need to find something to be happy about instead of going out and making something happy. So, I mean, making something happen so that you could be happy. Pathetic. Let's move on. Alright? Let's talk about Ward vs. Kovalev 2. First off, fight looked pretty good at first. Kovalev, I felt, was getting the better at times. I don't want to score by a round because due to the fact that it got to a point when you the rounds were pretty seesaw, it was a pretty even fight, all right, until we saw what happened. Low blow, hits Kovalev, comes over with over and right to hit Kovalev, so he's hurt, gets on the ropes. Andre Ward decides to hit him with three consecutive low blows, and what happened? The fight is stopped. How do you stop this fight? I don't understand this. Pauli Malignaggi, who's at ringside, makes a great point in this case. For those who did not see, all right? How do you stop a fight with Kovalev and people say, well, he wasn't defending himself? Yeah, because he was hit three times low blow. That's going to hurt you. Four times, technically. But that's going to that's gonna play into it, okay? But you're going to sit here and stop a fight because, you know, those low blows in there. But he, he was hurt. How about this? Did you try and stop the fight in the first fight when actually Ward was knocked down? No, no. So, are you trying to make a, a case and point that Kovalev was so hurt and not knocked down compared to when Ward got knocked down and didn't know where the fuck he was at? All right? Yeah, remember that? And then he held on to that entire time. So, are you trying to try to make that case? You can't. Matter of fact, it was a fucking joke. Now, look, Kovalev, he looked like he was getting a little gassed. Ward looked like he was... He was uh, he had uh, become ring general at that time because it got to a point where Kovalev really was like, I'm hitting him, but it's, it's really, he's not moving backwards as much as he was in, you know, in the first couple rounds. So, um, yeah, Ward had gotten to the later rounds. He became more savvy. He was starting to, you know, I believe this, he was, he was starting to bring it on. He was. But the way it was stopped was ridiculous. And you know what? Even the ref, Weeks, the ref admits himself. On Twitter, to all the boxing world, that he messed up. That's right. He says he didn't see the low blows and apologizes to everyone. So this week we got, you know, athletes who don't live up to their, you know, potential. They get thrown under the bus. If GMs don't live up to their potential front office, they can get thrown under the bus. But don't you talk about my franchise. Refs, who are supposed to be their job and live up to their potential, don't. And they were being criticized. Because that's what happens. You can criticize those for not doing their job accurately, but you don't really want to throw them under the bus. This guy is admitting he was wrong. Now, here's the problem with that. When you do something like that, and this is a rematch, because remember, Kovalev felt he was screwed the first fight, okay? Thought he was robbed. I personally thought he was robbed, too. But whatever, it was a close fight still, but I thought Kovalev still edged it out. This one, he was completely screwed. Do you think he's going to get a rematch? I don't think it is. These type of fights hurt careers, they do. If anyone is screaming Ward Kovalev 3, it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think people want to see that again. I really don't think. If it happens, you know what? God bless him. God bless him. But I think Ward is going to move on from this. I think he's going to try and take on Stevenson as far as I'm concerned. You got to think. Ward now has moved in to the upper echelon of light heavyweights. Okay? Because you got to think. You got Smith. You got Ward. You got Stevenson. Remember, Stevenson was ducking Kovalev for a very long time. Stevenson was ducking Hopkins for a very long time. That's why those two fought. All right? And then you got Smith who came along. You got to think Kovalev beat Hopkins, and then Smith knocked Hopkins out the damn ring. You think Stevenson was to fight any of those guys? Stevenson's supposed to fight, was it, from far again. 
That's going to be a tough fight. If Umbar brings his A game, that's going to be a tough fight for Stevenson again. But you have to understand that this is something that even Ward said he was thinking about moving up the heavyweight now. Moving up the heavyweight. So, Ward, you think you can beat an Anthony Joshua? You think you can beat a Deontay Wilder? Really? Really? This is where we're going now. He's like, you never know. Anything can happen. If Ward moves up in weight, he will be treated like Roy Jones was when he fought Ruiz. Which is, he's going to go out there, he's going to pull on the weight, he's going to flash, he's going to throw the punches, and then as soon as Ruiz tries to clinch and try to punch in the clinch, they're going to break that shit up. And as you know, that's what heavyweights do most. They lean on each other, they clinch, they punch each other. They're not going to let that shit happen. If you don't believe me, go back and watch Roy Jones versus Ruiz again. Where Ruiz, that's all he does, I mean, Ruiz, all he does is complain, he's like, what's going on here? He's like, you're not going to let me clinch him? No, because clearly, he's an undersized heavyweight. They're not going to let Ward go through that. Not take that punishment. No, they're not going to. So as far as I'm concerned, if they're going to have this rematch, let them have it. I don't think it's going to happen because, like I said, get screwed twice. First off, as a fighter, you get screwed twice, you're not going to want to deal with that shit again. And you're going to have to start all the way back to the beginning. And make your way back up the rankings. You get tired of that shit. Alright? But, if he does get the rematch, people are going to say, okay, what's going to go wrong this time? If Kovalev loses, is he going to say, I was screwed again? We see that a lot with Marquez, do we not? I was screwed. Okay, well you were screwed this fight. Next fight, you clearly lose. I was screwed. Okay. We saw that with Marquez and Bradley. Bradley clearly beat Marquez. But, I was screwed. You have to understand, these things happen, but it's absolutely ridiculous that anybody, I mean, would really want to see that again. No one wants to go into a third fight and say, okay, who's going to get fucked over this time? Because that's what you're banking, that's, that's the storyline. I got fucked over two times. Okay, let's even get fucked over a third time. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, I guess now that it's made official, we can talk about it. Conor McGregor versus Roy Jones, oh, Roy Jones Jr., just talking about it. Floyd Mayweather Jr., alright? First off, there's no doubt in my mind that Floyd Mayweather is going to win this fight, due to the fact that he is a boxing legend, and for those who say, but he's old, nah, y'all have to understand, even when he was so-called retired, he was still training. He was still training. If you don't think he was, you think he was just sitting off this entire two years and not sparring with people and not training, you have no idea what you're talking about. Conor McGregor. We've seen the sparring videos. Half of me does this. The other me is like, yeah, I like that. You want to know why I say that? Because sometimes it's best to throw out strategy and, and, and deceive people. If I put out a, 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 a video of doing really bad at sparring, and I got a fight coming up, and I want my opponent to think, I'm going to steamroll this fucking guy. Yeah, I'm not going to show you everything. Yeah, of course. I'm going to show you how bad I am. So when we get in the ring, you're going to take me for granted. And I'm going to really put it on you. So half of me says, okay, yeah, if that's really how you're coming out, you're fucked. Another me says, I hope that's diversion. Because if that's diversion, deceit, and, and, and illusion, then that's fucking awesome. You know what I mean? But I think that Floyd, Floyd Mayweather will win this fight. All right? I think if Conor McGregor, if he's going to have a chance, he's got to do it early. He's got to go for broke early. Because as you know, when Floyd gets into his fights, he gives you about three rounds to figure you out. So he's downloading you the entire time. He's trying to figure you out. By about round three, maybe round four, that's it. Okay? McGregor has to push the pace. I mean, seriously. It's a 12-round fight. I understand you don't want to get gassed. You don't want to, because you got to go into treading waters. But I feel as though at this point, McGregor has to go for broke. I say this due to the fact that Floyd will not have a chance to gather, you know, his, his thoughts and think about things if you keep that press on him. We saw this a bit when he fought Maidana the first time, okay? Also, with that said, if McGregor loses, what the fuck does McGregor lose? Nothing. He has nothing to lose in this point. Floyd has everything to lose. McGregor doesn't. So you have to think, these guys are already paid. They walking out the gate like, I'm good. You know what I mean? All McGregor has to do is, okay, I lost in this fight. I'm going to go back to UFC and I'm going to go do my thing. That's it. That's all it is. You have to understand, he loses nothing in this. Floyd, if, if he loses, if McGregor, because let's be honest here, if McGregor hits him hard enough, he, he can do something. We saw uh, Mosley hit Floyd. We saw what happened with Mosley and Floyd, didn't we? All right, then. So if McGregor hits him that hard, then it's all for him. You know what I mean? He's got nothing to lose. 
But these guys are being paid a lot of money right out the gate, guaranteed. And let's not forget, all right, the buy rates for how much, you know, how much the pay-per-view is going to do. Not to mention, this looks great for both sports when it comes to the UFC and boxing. You have two big names who are getting ready to cross over and fight. This does nothing but great things for both promotions. So, as far as I'm concerned, McGregor does have, he has nothing to lose. I feel he will lose, but he has nothing to lose. And no one can get on him. Because he's going to be like, eh, I tried my internet boxing, that's alright, I'm going to go back to UFC and try to become a champion again. That's all he's going to do. He takes losses like it's not, like, when he lost to Diaz, he was like, eh, we'll have a rematch. Not a big deal. He was the better guy, eh, not a big deal. Came back. You know, as we know, he won that one. A lot of people argue that he won that one, but came back, won that one. He's like, now what, bitches? That's all it is with McGregor. So he literally has nothing to lose. But for people to say that, I've seen, well, Floyd won't have a chance because of his length and the way he fights. And get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. you got to be kidding me if you really believe that shit. Like I said, there's a difference between knowing the fight game and fans who are on each side and how it helps their narrative. Same thing with Sixers fans. Same thing with Boston fans, or should I say, fat lack of Boston fans burning jerseys and shit. You've got to be kidding. This is what we're dealing with today. You know what? I'm fucking done for the day. I'm done with this shit. Like I said, I felt no one deserved this video anyway. I've done enough. I'll see y'all at the draft. Like I said, I hope we get Markel, you know, folks. If we don't, I'm going to watch the fans riot. And if we do, they're going to come up, I told you so all the process. Guaranteed. I told you, you are five years in. Five years into it now. I don't want to hear any more about process. This shit is dead as far as I'm concerned. If you're still screaming that shit, I'm going to look at you like a fucking clown. Alright? That's all it comes down to. Jesus Christ. Five years y'all want to come and talk shit now. You can miss me on this shit. I'll talk to y'all later. I'm out, man.